I'm here at the launch of the Mobile Phone Museum in London, a collection of more than 2,000 unique mobile phones from history. And I'm here with the curator, Ben Wood. You're gonna take me down a little trip on memory lane. I'd love to show you all 2,120 phones, but what we're gonna do today is pick a few out. And we've got some collections that we curated for the museum tonight. And the first one is what we consider one of the ugliest phones. Oh, in the collection. okay. Wow, whoever designed this will be upset. <laughs> Oh, not this. <laughs> now, I think I knew people at school who had this, and it looks very cool, but just totally impractical to text on. So this is the Nokia 7600. It was Nokia's first commercial 3G phone. And as you said, it was at the time when texting was very popular. And I guess there was an idea that you could text using your thumbs down the side, but it was counterintuitive. But look at it. I mean, it's not really a thing of beauty. Other phones in the Ugly collection include the NTT Personal, which won a design award back in 1995, but due to its shape is now known as the toilet seat phone. And this is the iKids SF from 2006, which has rabbit ears to make it appeal to children. Oh. Ah, <gasps> wait, is this... Is this from Tomorrow Never Dies? It is. Oh! I love this, and this must open up into... <gasps> I remember this, you can drag your finger across and drive the car. Also, we have the fingerprint scanner here. So, you may remember in the film that was done. Um, also, um, there was a, a magical um, screwdriver that you could use to <gasps> open a safe. Does it also do the recall three send? <laughs> the pièce de résistance, which is very difficult to make in a model. Yeah, the taser! <laughs> <laughs> Other movie phones in the collection include the Nokia 8110 banana phone from The Matrix, Nokia's first slider phone. The version in the movie was spring-loaded, but the real one you had to open by hand. And this white Sony Ericsson is another Bond phone, this one owned by Vespa Lind in Casino Royale. I want to show you a phone which was the phone <laughs> which the first mobile phone call in the UK was made on. This is the Vodafone VT1. A phone call was made on January the 1st, 1985. So the numbers are on here. Yep. And then you, hello. <laughs> Just check out the weight. Oh, oh wow, okay, so where do I put the apps? Oh, you might struggle with the apps on that one. This was my favorite category because there were so many world firsts, like the IBM Simon blending computer style features with a phone. It's widely considered one of the first smartphones of a sort, although it wasn't branded as one in 1993. Sharp's J phone from the year 2000 is considered by the museum to be the first full camera phone. Terribly low resolution by today's standards, but it sold out in two weeks in Japan. It had a mirror on the back for taking selfies. The first Android looked very different from today's phones with a full physical keyboard, but in many ways the first iPhone doesn't look that different from today's devices. And this was the first pocketable phone from 1986, at a time when mobiles were typically still bricks. Its designer Niels Martinson was one of the special guests I met at the museum. We had commissioned Stanford Research in America to forecast how many cellular telephones there would be in America, year 2000. And uh, they came back with the expensive report and said, we think that there may be as many as 30,000 in America by year 2000. And um, I think had they said 30 million, they would have been a little um, off the mark, even with that figure. We're going to go into the world of luxury. Oh, OK. This is the XOR phone. Now, the challenge I have for you is you've got to open it. I'm guessing it's to do with these, like, are these buttons? They are. Yeah. Push in. Hey! Okay, so. <laughs> and here it is. This is a £4,000 luxury phone with ruby crystals in here, sapphire crystal glass, um, beautifully polished titanium. So. And does it do anything fancy? The joy of this phone, and for the target market, is the fact that it doesn't do anything fancy. No camera. Celebrities, very high net worth individuals, hate camera phones. Everyone's going to know this one. 
We're on bestsellers. Is it going to be the 3310? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. There it is. Yep. Old and uh, trusty. Trusty and hardy. 3310. Controversial. I actually think the 3210 looks better. That's the one I had. And I never upgraded because I thought the other one looked nice. This looked cheaper somehow. But but a phenomenal commercial success. 126 million phones sold, the equivalent of the Japanese population. Every single person would have one. It's iconic. And do you know what? It's the one phone when I take in the museum and show people, everyone knows the 3310. Now the mobile phone museum at the moment is only online. What's the goal with this long term? So the museum project was conceived during the pandemic and kind of museums was a broken business case at that point. So we thought the best thing to do was go with a virtual museum online, instant global audience, crowdsource some of the exhibits as well. So we're getting help from the public to get those most wanted phones that we want to get. But in 2025, it will be 40 years since the first mobile phone call was made in the UK. And my hope is that we can put on a big exhibition at somewhere like the Science Museum, the Design Museum, V&A, and actually open the doors and let the public come and see this amazing collection. <laughs>